Dr. Muhammad Samsun is a resident around the area where the quake happened. He's joined us on the line now to speak to us. Doc, you're welcome to CTFM in Accra. How are you? Thank you very much. Uh, we can say we are, we thank God for Almighty Allah for the day, uh, but we are in a difficult situation over here in Turkey, especially we that we live from Osmania City. So you are in Osmania? Yeah. Which areas are uh, hard hit? So actually, uh, I have my office in Osmania. I was uh, out of the office the day before yesterday. Then uh, today, early morning, I get a call around 4.14 in the morning by my wife that there is an earthquake. Then I have to run back to Osmania to see how the situation is. And when you went, what did you see? Uh, very, very terrible because uh, when even I was entering Usmania, yeah, uh, there is no entrance to Usmania. Yeah? They are not allowing anybody to enter uh, because uh, the situation is too bad. Uh, but I managed, because I'm a medical practitioner as well, I managed to enter through. But we cannot pass to other uh, area in Usmania yeah? because most of the houses, they have gone down. Because right now, I'm telling you, more than 100 houses have come down in Usmania. And that's not even the hardest hit area, is it, Usmania? Yeah, we are among the worst area over there. What other areas were affected? Uh, it affected uh, a city called Iskandrum. It's uh, just around uh, around 50 to 60 kilometers out of Usmania. And then we have another city called Adana. It affected a little. Uh, but there is a major one city around like uh, 150 kilometers or more. It's called Hatay. Uh, Hatay, even now, I just have a call from a friend. They are not even getting any help because we to pass through there. The hospital have gone down, the, the uh, general hospital over there for the government. Uh, some of the police area have gone down. Like they don't have a means. Now, even a means of entering there is a problem. And the problem is that we, we, this thing happened in a winter section. Uh, we are experiencing a call. Like, like now it's snowing. You cannot move anywhere. The snow is affecting us. And at the same time, wind is affecting us. And then this thing occurs at the same time. How is your family? Uh, not bad. Uh, for now, I take my family. They're inside the car. We are trying to move out of the city so that we can go to a safe location. Where is but, safe? Uh, everybody is panicking. They are not well. Everybody is uh, panicking. Uh, they couldn't find it difficult. The children are crying. Like they are thinking this is the end of the world. And where are you running to? Now we are heading to Ankara. Uh, it's the capital city around uh, 400 kilometers away from Usmania. And you believe that is a safe place to go to? Uh, we, we hope so, because uh, that is the center of Turkey, one. Uh, secondly, our embassy is uh, situated in Ankara. Then we want to go back to Ankara and see how the situation will be. When but you say now, embassy, the, when you say embassy, it means you are not Turkish yourself. Yeah, I am, uh, I'm a Nigerian, uh, but I live in Turkey for the past 12 years, and I'm married to with a Turkish wife. I see. Do you know, we, we are seeing reports, 2,600 people dead. Um, for us here, this would be just statistics, but you clearly maybe would have know, know someone or know someone who knows someone who, who suffered. Is this story close to you, the death that have been reported? Uh, of course, of course. Uh, I have even a neighbor, and then I have my uh, brother-in-law, his house have gone down, and they have a debt over that house. And then uh, for now, approximately what we are hearing from Turkey, uh, within the, about like uh, six to seven cities, uh, the debt is around more than 2,000. Because only on is in Usmania, we have more than 300 people dead. Only Usmania. Okay. Now, how is the government reacting down there and the security agencies? What are you watching on Turkish TV and social media? What is happening? Uh, uh, no, for the Turkish now, uh, because since when it started today morning, uh, all most of the Turkish, uh, I think about more than 80% to 90 all the Turkish uh, uh, TVs and then uh, radios, they are focusing on the uh, earthquake. 
and then uh, uh, the government are doing their best because uh, they have already employed all the security agencies from the gendarme, from the soldiers, from the police, even there are some volunteers, they are all going towards that area so that they can give their own contribution. And then we have some uh, private uh, private uh, communities like uh, we have in Turkey, we have uh, one called IHH, IHA. Uh, I saw them many on the way going. We have Asia, I saw them many on the way going. And then we have some uh, non-government organization from uh, like Azerbaijan, they are even coming by their own jets because we have uh, some airports in Adana, just uh, one and one, uh, one, 106 hours away from Osmania, they are coming through there. You say that you are headed towards um, Ankara, which is your administrative yeah. capital. You are fleeing the scene of devastation. I believe you are not the only one doing this. You would have encountered several other persons fleeing on the road, or it, the roads are clear? I couldn't get it clear. Yes, we wanted to understand if there are many other people trying to leave the area you are towards Ankara so that the traffic situation as you move uh, east towards. The traffic is so hectic because uh, right now, uh, Micah, with the stretch of the winter, Micah, if I'm going, I cannot speed more than 20 to 30 because uh, there's a lot of traffic, there's a lot of people going around. Even some are trying to see if they can move there with their own uh, barefooted to move out of those areas. Talking of uh, the people are having cars. But right now, everybody is evacuating uh, because uh, when I'm coming in the morning, I uh, encounter many people are coming from Istanbul, uh, from Ankara, from Eskishel. They're just coming to pick their own people. Some of them, they have a relative. Everybody is coming to pick his own people and they get out of the city. But still, we have people there that they are frustrated. Uh, they are just uh, trying to see how they can get help from the uh, non-government organization if they can leave the city. Because it's not everybody has the opportunity to have his own private car to move out of the uh, city. Because uh, most of the uh, local committee bosses, they are not working. Most of them have been going to see how they help because uh, all the have gone out stuck inside, then they have to go for uh, how they can help. Hello, Doc? Can you hear me, Doc? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I, th I think I lost you there at the tail end of your submission. I lost you. Okay, okay. I said uh, right now, most of the uh, commercial bosses and all the people within the government, they are trying to go to those areas so that they can rescue their own people. Uh, because we have uh, most of the buildings that have come down, a lot of people have been stuck inside the building. Uh, because in Osmania, uh, there is a particular building I know. It's uh, a nine-story building. Uh, it comes down all. There is more than... Uh, uh, more than like 100 to 200 people living in that area, in that building. I think they said for now, they just moved not more than five people. Some of them are stuck inside. So major buildings went down. Pardon? I'm saying that the, the sizes of the buildings that went down, this would be huge story yeah. buildings or, 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 or low-rise buildings? Uh, no, most of these, uh, the buildings that we are having, they are high hill buildings. Apartment. All right. Um, now you also mentioned that there's an issue with snow. Um, that becomes a twin problem for you because if people are removed from their houses because the houses have collapsed, they would need shelter, and outside would be too cold for them. How 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 is the government solving that problem? Uh, yeah, for now, the government are trying to, like, uh, especially food, uh, especially blankets. Yeah, the government are trying, uh, but the issue is that there are local areas that even the government cannot go through because of how the people have gone down, they cannot clear the road. But for the other people that they can get through past, the government are trying their best. Because uh, when I'm coming out, I saw some government cars, they are feeding some people just on the street. And then they are trying to create like a shelf uh, on the roadside so that uh, people can be able to enter and they catch some little warmth. But uh, the best thing is that most of them now they are seeing if they can have 
some buses that they can take the people outside of the city, at least to a city nearby, that they can be safe. Finally, you have left your home. I believe you could not pack all your belongings. What's the plan? You're going to come back or that's it? Goodbye to uh, Osmania? No, for now, for my house, now I don't know even the situation. I didn't pick even a shirt because when I go there, my family, they are already outside because when it starts shaking in the morning, they say like some of the work drop have come down, then they have panicking. And when they try to go outside, when I go back to Usmania, we cannot even go to that location. Then because of that, we don't know the situation of the house. I didn't go and pick anything. Just that the clothes I have in myself, that is what I have. Uh, but actually, uh, this is where I live for like about 20 years. Uh, it's my home now. Let's see how it will end. When we are safe, we can go and see how it will be. We wish you all the best and thank you for speaking to us. You are much welcome. Now, Dr. Mohammed Samsun, he's a doctor based in Turkey, Osmania, is the area where he was at with his family before the earthquake drove everybody out. Earlier, he sent this voice note. Listen. All this said the experience. Uh, this is uh, uh, pictures that have been uh, snapped by my wife in the dear light. Uh, and just this are the only area that she can be able to pass because the remaining area she cannot even pass through there. And now uh, even the worst part that we are facing, I will send you some video when I'm coming, a lot of snow. Like now we are moving, uh, we cannot even move more than uh, 30 to 40, our managers of the car, because there is too much snow snowing down. You cannot even move. Too much traffic, too much snow, too much raining. All this is the experience. So that's uh, the doctor who we spoke to a short while ago, um, and it has to do with the situation in Turkey. We do not currently have the situation uh, or the exact s situation with um, our, our football star, Christian Achu, we are told is caught under the rubble or is trapped under the rubble. Uh, unfortunate, disturbing news. Uh, let me go to Ankara and speak to Farida Shaibu, a former colleague here at CTFM who is resident now in Ankara, Turkey. Far Farida, you're welcome to CTFM. Thank you, Sandra. Good evening. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, I can hear you. Is 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 better now? Um, how how is the situation? Um, is is Ankara affected? No, Ankara is not affected. Um, if I should say, fortunately because we are um, very far away from um, Hayat, which is about from Accra to Tamale. So that should be uh, quite a distance. But did you feel the quake in, in Ankara? Did you feel any shaking of the earth in any way? Yes, of course. For such a magnitude, I think usually you feel some aftershocks because we've had um, places as far as Jerusalem, Israel, you know, feeling the, the earthquake. And for, for those of us in Ankara, even today, I think there were some people who had to move out of their office buildings because um, there were reported cases of some buildings shaking here and there. So those are the aftershocks. Some of us feel it. And I think last night, um, I don't know if it was as a result of the earthquake, but it's possible. We also felt something. You know, so we didn't feel um, there was no earthquake as, as, as much as in Hayat, but we, we felt a bit of tremor due to the magnitude. Is it a regular occurrence, earthquakes? I've been here for about three years. Um, this is the second time I have felt um, some tremor. I wouldn't say earthquake, but of course, there have been reports in Istanbul, in other areas. The first time I experienced it was um, a couple of months ago, I think getting to the end of last year. So it was just about 4 a.m., just around that time. And then we just saw the room swaying left and right. You know, you can just feel the bed you're lying on, moving. And it was quite scary. Mm. Initially, I didn't know what was going on because I was sleepy. So I thought it was a dream or something like that. <laughs> But <laughs> you don't know what is happening until you wake up and then you see in the news that, okay, there was an earthquake and there was a tremor here and there. It, it was very scary. So yesterday, I think something came into my mind, actually, when, when I started feeling, you know, 
those it it it, it gets scary mm. and, and, and and it's late. How is the reaction from the population, especially in the capital where you are, to the events in in Hataya? Um yeah. Um, are people are people taking course, to social media commenting on this? Was the traditional media reporting about it? What has the government been doing? Yeah, so far um, there's been um, the government has declared a seven day uh, mourning nationwide. Um, actually, this this came um, um, coincidentally to um, a snow alert warning we had yesterday. So today. The news was that all roads, um, all schools will be closed, and some roads will be blocked because we were expecting very heavy snow, which didn't happen. Only to wake up to the news that there was rather an earthquake. So I, I can just imagine if we had that amount of snow we were expecting, which was supposed to be about 80 percent. In addition to this earthquake, I don't know what would have happened because even till now. Uh, with rescue efforts still ongoing, there are still people trapped under, and then the the dangerous thing is that they are still feeling cold. You know, there's so much cold down there, and then there are people still down there, and then from what I hear, it makes it difficult, you know, for them to actually stay in there for long because, of course, there there's so much cold that you you can't do anything about it. Mm. So, yeah. What's the time now? It's um, it's 10 p.m. exactly. Which means that rescue operations may have to be suspended because it's night, unless maybe they have enough light to, to guide them. And the exercise think, may have to continue tomorrow. I think it's ongoing because they, they just can't stop. They have, they have enough lights from what I was seeing in the news. Um, there are people still um, calling for help and then asking to to be rescued. So mm. I don't think they are going to stop anytime soon. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Farida, and please be safe and take care of yourself. Thank you, too. That's Farida Shaibu, a former colleague here at CTFM, who is resident now in Ankara, Turkey, speaking to us there about the sad situation.